So, welcome to this uh, Sweden C++ uh, event. We are here on location in uh, the Institute of Technology in Stockholm. Uh, so, tonight, first we will listen to Thomas Backlund as he tells us about the open source project Space and himself. And then, of course, we will break for Fika and perhaps look at uh, the makerspace downstairs. Uh, and then after the FICA, we come back here and we discuss C++ and your ideas and projects and see where we meet. So I want to tell you we are currently four organizers of meeting C++, or Sweden C++, I always say it the wrong way. So I'm Kjell Hagdahl, and I'm the initiator of this event tonight. And with me here is Harald, and Jonas behind the camera. And Paul is unfortunately sick tonight, so he couldn't be here. I've also been told I should thank JetBrains, because they sponsor us with the Sea Lion licenses. So, that's good. I actually got in touch with Thomas in 2013. Uh, and we actually decided to meet on the island Malta. Yeah. So you showed me the Blocky, uh, the tool uh, to program by graphically connecting function blocks. Yes. Yeah. And you have the vision to liberate programming. <laughs> it's well put. <laughs> <laughs> and the story about how you moved to live in the forest and program, you've been, you told it on TEDx mm -hmm. and also on the web, and perhaps a little bit tonight, I don't know. Yeah, of course, a little bit. So I strongly sympathize with uh, how Thomas approaches programming, his ideas on collaborating uh, and development, and how it can apply, it be applied to environmental issues, uh, and possibly make life a little bit more easy for all of us. <laughs> that is the plan. Uh, but tonight he's here to tell us about uh, the open source project space. So I would like you to give a warm hand to Thomas, the forest hacker, Backland. Okay, thank you, Shilulov. Um The forest hacker, yeah, I like that. <laughs> thank you very much for having me here at C++ Sweden. Or was it the other way around, Sweden, C++? So uh, I want to talk about a, uh, um, an open source project that we have made and actually launched today about two hours ago for this event. It's called Space, or officially the Space Gal Shell. It's about uh, automation for the Internet of Things, but really, I'll get to that soon, Internet of Things is really us and our lives in the near future. So what about this thing with forest hacking? <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so 2013, about three years ago, I was working full time uh, as a coder, as many of you do, I guess. But I really needed to do something else. Um, working full time and uh, <clears throat> paying your rent and everything and just going back to work. It was kind of a cycle that didn't really, really feel, feel that good. Um, depends, of course, what you're working on. I mean, if you have the most exciting job, that is good. Um, but I was more interested in some projects that I had in my head <clears throat> and I felt that I had to do. So how do you make room for such a thing to be your own kind of boss uh, when you really don't have any resources? Uh, you have to cut this loop somewhere and as soon as you cut it somewhere it's gonna just fall apart. You have a job, 
You get you make money and you have your apartment and your life. You get it somewhere, everything is gonna break. <laughs> that could be a good thing. So I quit my apartment. Uh, and then I quit my job because I couldn't. Or actually, it was the other way around. I quit my job, uh, and then I quit my apartment because I couldn't pay for it anymore. Got some good solar panels, uh, a very good tent. I was lucky. I got some sponsors for this forest project. I had no idea. I just started calling these companies uh, to sponsor me with the gear <laughs> to live in the forest. And most really thought this was a crazy idea. And I think they didn't want to have on their conscience not to have sponsored me with a good tent or, or, or a, a very good backpack or something like that. Because you know, if something happens, it's not going to be their fault. They gave me what I needed to succeed. <laughs> so I'm very, very um, happy about that and, and thankful for those companies. <clears throat> There's a... Uh, yeah, I have my personal homepage there, some old uh, archive blog posts, if anyone would ever find the interest to read them. So what, yeah, one spring morning in 2013, I, the only thing I kept was my car. Got rid of everything else I owned. Just went out, parked the car somewhere on a deserted forest road, walked, walked away. It was amazing. I was so, so happy. <laughs> um, so I spent some time in, in an area, living in the tent, getting up early every morning to get the most of the sun, to, to charge the, I had a battery pack, and really just sitting, coding, coding, coding. Uh, at that time it was a lot of C++. Um, and I remember one particular night I was debugging something. I think it was a memory leak or something like that. <clears throat> so sitting with the computer, uh, running uh, the GDB uh, with my code, and I couldn't find the error, and there was mosquitoes everywhere trying to eat me while I was sitting there debugging C++ memory leaks. That could have been, uh, been uh, the, the most difficult time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and also the most amazing, amazing months, five months. I was out there. So what, what, what was this thing I was thinking about? And still, I am thinking a lot about it. And now we are much closer to, to bringing solutions. <clears throat> the problem is really simple, really. Uh, I'm just going to quote myself here. <laughs> As our lives become more and more digital, everyone must have the choice to create their own software if they need it it does boil down to a matter of democracy and equality. It's, uh, it wasn't true 100 years ago. Uh, it is true today, and it's going to be even more important in five years, in 10 years, like in, in 20 years. If you're not on, on top of your software game in 20 years, I mean, you're really out of luck. You're going to have problems. Um, yeah, there's some interesting uh, philosophers, digital philosophers, talking about like different digital classes, and I think we all want, all want to strive to to be in the class where we control our own lives. So this is our promise <clears throat> to deliver tools to help push users upstream, and that will bring us to the Internet of Things and the, the beginning of our solution to this, and it's called Space Gal, which space is a part of the first product, really. So what is upstream? I'm thinking of if the internet is a giant graph network, and uh, if you're just a consumer of the internet, you're really at the end somewhere, an edge of this uh, giant graph. Um, <clears throat> and that is really downstream because you're not in control, you're just being at the end of a waterfall and water is just coming down on you and you, have, you can't do anything about it. So, but if you go upstream, 
you will be a part of the flow. Flow will come, but you will also direct flow like you want. Flow could be you know, your data or, or you know, your own digital presence. So that is what we mean about, about pushing users upstream. And we want to make tools to make that happen. It's not easy to get upstream. Like if you're in a canoe, you need a, a good canoe, you need a, a paddle, and you gotta have a lot of effort to paddle upstream. But yeah, we wanna make that paddle for you. <laughs> so SpaceCal is a set of tools and services delivered by the company Blocky, which was founded uh, about three years ago. SpaceCal's goal is to guide you through your own future within the Internet of Things. So, in a hyper-connected future, you want to be a collaborative participant. You do not want to be left downstream as a sink for everybody else's will. I guess most of us don't want that, at least. You want to be in some kind of control over, over you know, your own life, really. It's all about community, openness, collaboration, having a, a, an environment for creativity which, and where we create stuff together. So, just recapping here. Block is the company, SpaceCal is the, like the big product, and Space is the first small product within this big product. The space car shell, it's also called. What is it? Well, it's really just a bash script. About 4,000 lines of code at the current version, which was released today. It's uh, uh, the GNU public license, license, so it's free to use. It has a built-in YAML parser and preprocessor written in bash. It has a module system which is decentralized, so we don't have control over uh, contributions, other people's modules, because that wouldn't, you know, doesn't work in the long run, really, to sit on a central repository where we, which we can control. Uh, it's not fair. So really, it's a command line tool with good tab completions to help you use it. It has a user interface in the terminal, you know, this nice 80 times 25 rows. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, at this point, it is uh, optional. It's going to get built in soon. So infrastructure communication and automation made uh, easy and declarative. So. If you're setting up infrastructure uh, and services on uh, some virtual machines in the cloud, you could do that in a web interface, but you don't want to do that again and again and again. You want automation. <clears throat> and space is a tool for doing these types of things. And these types of things you want to do in a declarative manner, saying that I want this, and you run it, and you get there, like a state. You get to a state. And then, if you can remember if you did, if you did run this, or if you didn't, you just run it again. It's, you're gonna be in the same state. Uh, so it doesn't break stuff, like in a procedural way. Uh, usually it's called infrastructure uh, as code. So space is very lightweight. It is, we call it dependency-free because it's only dependent on Bash, which is usually available, even on Windows. How many here are using Windows? No, oh, a few. Um, so it's good, you can use it too. So the space, the space gal shell uh, builds, when you run it, it builds and exports a script, and that script is POSIX compliant. So that script doesn't need bash, it, just, it, it can run in a simpler shell, be it ash or, or dash or what have you. 
and it doesn't even require the space program anymore. So space is very dependency free and it generates code that is even more dependency free than itself. So these exported scripts, um, you, you just run them immediately, which, which you most often do, or you can save them and share them, have them for, for later. Easy to install. No, just pipe the internet if you dare. <laughs> or you can download the tarball and you can check the, the GPG signatures so that everything is okay. It's very Unix friendly. Maybe it's also Windows friendly nowadays. I don't know. Ubuntu on Windows, I haven't tried it. Anyone tried it? And Unix-like systems, they have so many good tools. And they are so battle-proven. But it can be a bit hard to, to actually know that they exist, <laughs> how to use them, what switches are there, etc. So space is really your best friend in leveraging Unix tools. So everything space does, you can do at the command line, but it's going to hurt. So using space, you can do, you can really become an elite Unix master <laughs> with this tool. And you can learn from it because everything is exportable. So you can get the script, you can look at it, you can learn, you can verify that it looks good. <clears throat> Runs on GNU Linux, uh, Mac OS X, uh, BSD then of course, uh, BusyBox, Android, I'm going to show you later, I uh, actually installed it on my Android phone and did some extraction of the photos. So why would, why would you want to do this in Bash? Anyone coded a lot in Bash or anything? Yeah. <laughs> you like Bash. <laughs> it's fun, uh, but it, it's, a, it's a bit tricky, don't you say? Uh, it has its own ideas. So. Mm, yeah. Maybe it's not the first choice for programming language. Uh, but the thing is, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's almost everywhere, and that's very nice. So about a couple of years ago, I started experimenting in Bash. So I made an April Fool joke, uh, a document database engine that uses Bash and a tool called SoCat, just regular uh, GNU tools. So you can have a document database just running at your command line, uh, written in, in Bash. I released this the 1st of April, a couple of years ago. Uh, you might think it's called 7 roll DAB. No, no, no. Do you know what it's called? Troll DB. Troll DB. <laughs> You use it, you know, at your own risk. <laughs> Bash is everywhere. <clears throat> uh, or some, a simpler shell, a POSIX shell is everywhere. So if you want to re remote control stuff using space, you can do, be very unintrusive. You don't have to install anything on your remote, remote servers, the Raspberry Pi, something. If you can SSH to it, you can just seize control over it. You don't have to install, there's no Python, there's no Ruby, you know, there's nothing like that. If there's a shell there, ash, dash, or bash, you can use space from your laptop using modules. Com space will make a composition of the modules, export your script, SSH to that server, and do like a user would have done, typing stuff, kind of. What is a module? It's more or less just two files, a YAML file and a space file, uh, space file YAML, space file shell. YAML file is a, um, a textual kind of st structure file um, for a hierarchy. <coughs> <coughs> so modules can use each other's uh, functions. Space will make a composition of 
whatever you have included, uh, etc. End result is exported, run it directly, save it for later. Say that you have a, a client that really wants to have a tool to, I want to restart this service <coughs> whenever I want. So you don't want the client calling you every time. So you, you can export that particular function. This is how you restart the service. To a script, and give it to your client. Modu a module is more or less just a Git repo, uh, which we clone or using Git, or if you don't have Git, if you're on a constrained device, uh, we can fetch it over HTTPS too. Uh, and uh, the mo most of the, of the um, Git uh, uh, services like GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, they, they support this. <clears throat> so this is the default. If you load a module called SSH, this is the default. This is our module repository, gitlab.com space SSH. If you make a module, you put it on, say, GitHub, you will have to say github.com, username, module name. Uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's de decentralized, so we don't control what modules are going to be out there. But we want, don't want to control that. Uh, it should be out of our control. Uh, however, <clears throat> being a package, package manager, um, you've got to be careful what you install. And that, go, that goes for every package manager you have. <clears throat> I've seen some, there's some trolling with uh, a very famous uh, package manager where you install something, it has a dependency, a dependency, a dependency, and then all of a sudden, someone is posting to Twitter on your behalf. <laughs> something like that. Um, so, we use GPG signing. You can elevate the security level if you want to. So, you only use modules that are signed by someone in your ring of trust. Um, also, we have ban lists of modules that might be broken, bad, or just evil. So every time you clone something, it's going to check against this ban list, just for, as a precaution. Quick example. So <clears throat> this is a uh, YAML file. Everything that starts with underscore is uh, uh, metadata. Man, this is not necessary. This is just nice to have when you forgot what, why you wrote this module. <laughs> and you can reach this uh, help from the command line. You can have uh, the dash, dash H switch. You're going to see this to help yourself. So, and this is a command, really. This is a node first. So this YAML file has one command, it's called first. And it points to this uh, bash or shell function, actually. So this, this is the function you, we are referring to from the YAML file. This function um, has a states a dependency to another function that's this function. It also declares the signature, what it, it is expecting. This is just, you know, POSIX shell code. Mm, and in the long run, this becomes quite um, powerful. So this, if I, exp if I write here, <clears throat> this is a known name, so I, uh, I dump this out. You get, you get your shell script, um, run it directly. If you don't have the dash uh, D switch, it's just going to run it directly. Or you can uh, inspect this, you can save it for later. So every, everything of this is user, user code. This part is uh, something that space provides to just output some error messages. Ready for some demo? 
Here we go. Here's the space.sh uh, uh, freshly baked site launched just a few hours ago. Yeah, so we can see some examples of how to uh, how to install pipe the internet, or even better, pipe the internet being root. <laughs> Uh, or you can go here and uh, you know do a proper install, check the signatures and everything. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, tutorial, tutorials and examples. All right. So, I'm gonna show you just a, a few quick uh, ASCII costs. Have you used this tool? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. ASCII NEMA. It records your terminal not as a, as a video, as text. And you can just play it up using JavaScript. Very nice. Installing. Yeah, I'm doing the, the root install now, so I get it. Uh, globally. Okay, here we go. Let me just stop there <laughs> really quick. Uh, so everything this is output from, from space. Uh, it gives us a hint if you want uh, auto-completion now, uh, you, have to, you, have, you have to reload your bash. I just do that, uh, launch another bash shell with a uh, L switch there. I'll, the next time you log in, it's going to be there. Okay. So here we run M for module, the module called uh, OS, OS, operating system, and the target is uh, info. So all targets are um, uh, they have a hierarchy and they're always, uh, they always begin and end with a slash. There we go. So the OS module has a target named info and a function that just gets some, some information about the current operating system, which is uh, uh, used a lot when, when you're using space to install something on, on something, be it Linux or be it Android, uh, GNU Linux or, or BusyBox uh, Android Linux, uh, space is gonna make the translation for you. Like, what package manager is available? Uh, what is this uh, package actually called on this distribution? Because it can, it can vary. So space uh, has a, a like a list of packages and uh, which are a Debian convention, and it can translate to other. So if you make something. If, I, if I'm on GNU Linux and I make a module, I can actually unit test it uh, using different Docker environments for different distributions. So I know it, it's going to work on BusyBox, uh, you know, Ubuntu and uh, Arc, Alpine, etc. <coughs> See there? It was a it was a tab completion. <laughs> So this is the, the, the full name of the, of the module. Uh, so now we're, we're running the root node, uh, minus uh, h for help. Uh, yeah, I didn't have much help here. <laughs> yeah, you saw the, the YAML file. This would have been the text from the YAML file. I should have got that there. So these are two other targets. We're going to use this SSL module to, uh, to generate a uh, certificate to get an SSL certificate for your website. Um, you, know, you do that every now and then, but you kind of forget, how do I do this? <coughs> Why don't you just use uh, space the next time? Generating, so now it's complaining that you didn't provide the arguments, so you get a good hint what is missing. Now we have, have a uh, uh, certificate request. 
Okay, now it's going faster. This is speed up. Okay, I'm not that fast really in typing. <laughs> so now I have uh, two windows open. I'm going to do something that is a pain many times. I just want to transfer a file from this computer to that computer. And I don't want it going through the cloud. I don't want to email the file to me. No. And uh, maybe I'm too lazy to even set up some kind of SSH uh, keys and accounts and stuff. So if you're on the same network, you don't have to encrypt it. You can just send it using nice tools like Netcat or SoCat. If you're, yeah. So the transfer module do does this for you. So here we're listening. This is the server. There we go. Hello. Okay, this is going fast. Did you see that? <laughs> so if you're on the same network and it's not a very sensitive data, you can just send it unencrypted, you know, if it doesn't matter. You could also hook space up in a pipe so you encrypt it with a GPG, like you can have a symmetric passphrase, you just type in something uh, on that side and on the other side. Of course, you can use your keys too, but the whole point was that you don't have any environment. You have no keys or nothing. So then you will just have a password. <coughs> okay. <coughs> any questions so far? So can you just set up a TCP connection between the two nodes? Um, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> exactly. <coughs> so uh, Netcat is a really nice tool uh, for listening, creating sockets to listen for TCP connections um, and connecting to TCP. And SoCat is a kind of Netcat plus <laughs> plus. So it's it's <coughs> like it's better. It's really more versatile, but also it's not available, often you have to install it. It's available, but you have to install it. Uh, Netcat is kind of often just installed. But could this module install it? Absolutely. Because it knows how to install things yeah. on all environments. Yes. Just a general question. You have a bunch of operating systems that you want to support. Yeah. Uh, but that sort of diminished the amount of tools you can use to the what's available on every platform. Mm -hmm. How do you handle this? Is it restricted or do you have some kind of information about this tool only works on this subset of platforms? Or? Um, yeah, I think you will, you will say when you write a module, <coughs> uh, you will unit test it. We have a test, a test runner that tests this again a whole set of different uh, environments. So you, you're going to know where it breaks. Okay, yeah. And if you can fix it or not. <clears throat> I have to say that so far, it's not a problem because yeah. These, yeah. these tools are, they've been around for so long time that they have really penetrated. So it's mostly the basic Unix-like tools that's been around since the early days. Yeah. That have more or less progressed all the way out to yes. the entire fleet of. And also to, to your question, this the transfer module I just showed you, uh, it prefers to use SoCat, mm -hmm. but it, it will fall back to Netcat. Oh, okay. So if you have SoCat on your laptop, but you have Netcat on your Android phone or your Raspberry Pi, those two, will, they're going to work together. Um, like the only, you're going to see it later in the demo here, I'm using Netcat. And there's a, when you're transferring files with Netcat, uh, it doesn't really know when it's time to quit. Um, and there, there's, there are, a lot, there are f many different flavors of Netcat. That is also a thing. So that is why we prefer SoCat. Because Netcat, you have, uh, what is it, the, the BZ Netcat, the GNU Netcat. I don't know, maybe Busybox has a Netcat too. Yeah, yeah, it has. The Nmap package has its own Netcat, I think. Um, right, so 
Netcat works, but it, it can be a bit kind of like that. <coughs> All right. So we're gonna, now we're going to actually install it on this Android phone. This I did last night. So I'm gonna I'm gonna install Space now on the phone. I hooked up a. Uh, I'm sure. So I hooked up this keyboard to the phone, and I and I took an ASCII NEMA screencast. And this is exactly what you're gonna see. And the whole point is to extract all the photos from there without touching the cloud, right? And without plugging in a USB cable to the computer, because that never works. <laughs> yeah, so there's an app called Termux. Install, just install it, and you have a, you have a Debian-like uh, system that runs uh, uh, BusyBox. Uh, BusyBox is a, uh, they call it a multi call binary or something like that. It's one binary who, which emulates a lot of the kind of the GNU tools and, and, uh, and the Unix-like system tools. <coughs> it's used on constrained devices, you know. <coughs> come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that fast on this keyboard. This is definitely speeded up. Okay, so I'm installing curl more or less, so, so that I can install space. Now we're installing space. There we go. You can see that the, the paths uh, on the Android phone, they're, you know, they're different. Okay, just to get clear, you installed the term, term UX, so yeah. you have this clean phone, and then curl, and then the rest. So you're more or less building it up from scratch now. Yes. So, there we go. <clears throat> uh, bash completion, because we want completions, right? We want to use the tab. Uh, curl, so we can actually fetch uh, the tarball. And Encurses Utils is for the, the tput program, which is used for coloring the terminal. So we don't, we don't have to have this, but it's very nice with colors. Uh, right, so it's installed, and as you can see, the, the paths are very, you know, they're very different on on the Android device than anywhere else. Okay, let's run. So, I want to run. I, there's a module called Android, uh, <coughs> and it's complaining that Git is not installed. We could, however, try to download the module over HTTPS if you provide the capital S switch. Then we're going to use curl or fall back to vget also. Uh, and I don't want to install git now because uh, I just want the module. <laughs> there we go. Come on. All right. Fetching. Yeah, now we've got the bash completion there. Camera. These are all the photos on my phone. I haven't backed up in a long time because I was waiting for making this module. <laughs> Let's see. I installed the transfer module now. Here we go, okay, pausing there. So we're running the Android <coughs> module. This is the target. I call it camera, tar, G, zeta, just uh, archive all the photos uh, into one, zip it and archive it into one tar wall. Don't store it as a file. Uh, we're gonna, just gonna pipe it, stream it because we, we might don't have space on the phone to store you know, all the photos in an archive as well. So we're just gonna pipe it out. So we pipe it to another space uh, module. The connect, uh, sorry, the transfer module. We're connecting, so we're, we're opening a TCP connection to 
the laptop on this port. And now, of course, on the laptop, I I'm using the transfer module and I'm listening for a connection. Uh, you, you, you can't see it here, <laughs> of course, but <laughs> on the laptop, on this IP address, I am using the module tool and listening. Ah, there you can see. Uh, so cat is not installed. Uh, falling back to netcat, which is somewhat tricky. <laughs> so after you know this is done, you have to press Control C. That's one of the kind of icky things not using SoCat. Yeah, all right, so this is just going to transfer, 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 and going to fast forward. Yeah, so that was it, actually, transferring photos from your phone. All right, so uh, any questions on that? Um. <clears throat> what have you done with your uh, from, from sort of original state? Absolutely nothing. Uh, no, it's, it's not rooted or anything. Nothing. No, no, no. 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 Just uh, installed the Torimux app. Um. In the next cast, I'm going to show you how to install an SSH server <coughs> on the phone using space. So we can connect to it with SSH. Because now we're talking. You know, it's more secure, it's encrypted. Uh, and you might be on a different network. We, we got to work ourselves up to um, from being on the same, very same local area network to not being there. Uh, because then it becomes a, a, you know, a real problem. Uh, and, and that's why I'm preparing, um, I will show you that another day, but uh, I'm preparing the phone now with an SSH server for, for when we are, it's on a cellular network and I'm on some other network. Because then um, the phone doesn't really have an IP address it can answer on. And that's a problem. And uh, the laptop is usually behind some kind of router or firewall that, that blocks incoming connections. Of course, you can open a port so your laptop actually can answer on a TCP connection. Uh, but like here in, this, in the thing's house, I can't open a port here. And at home, man, I don't want to open a port. So in that case, what you what are you gonna do? <laughs> Any suggestions? Stun. Tunnel? Yeah. Just stun. Just a stun protocol. Stun. Stun yeah. protocol. Uh, firewall penetration thing. Okay. Some hacking. You, <laughs> I, actually, you 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 if you connect from your device to the internet, you automatically open up a port on the firewall. So that it can get the reply back. Okay. And using that, you can actually open up ports. There, there's protocols for it. Mm, yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's used by like a very large CEO. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Nice. This will be the first module you write. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're using a, a bit more just crude methods. Actually, we're using a third part, a third party, uh, some other server anywhere that you have some kind of access to. Because then we create uh, tunnels. Um, that, is that is very advanced to do, and it's very easy to not get it working the first you know, hours. <laughs> but with space, it becomes really easy. Uh, so I'm preparing to do that. And also, I, I want to connect to the phone like anytime I want and anytime I actually have the server on, of course. Um, so I'm not connecting from the phone. I'm going to connect, in that case, to the phone via this uh, third party server. However, I'm not going to show that today because I didn't have time to do those <laughs> costs. But I, I'm going to show you how to. Um, Just a moment uh, when your cellular networks. 
Mm -hmm. Usually behind net. Yeah. The, the ISP is actually having a net firewall, so yeah. you don't have an official IP address down there. Yeah. So exactly. you need something out Yeah. Yeah. It's really a hassle, and, and also for yeah, for Internet of Things. Right. It's a hassle. It's a hassle. Yeah. And we have, there are many solutions, of course. We have, we have this solution. So let's install SSH on, uh, on the phone. Post that. Uh, so <clears throat> this is a by convention uh, underscore def underscore install is a node that you provide in your YAML and you connect to a shell function that is going to install what this module needs. So when I, when I download your module, um, I'm going to run this target, dep install. I, I'm going to expect to, either it's going to say uh, all dependencies are met, or it's going to install what I need. In this case, it's installing the SSH uh, uh, daemon. Yeah, you see, it installs successfully. Very good. Making a directory for it. Let's see. So uh, tab completion, just to see what targets do I have there. OK, gen key. I want to generate a key. Yes, please. The server needs a, uh, a key, just as the, the SSH client needs a key. So what I'm doing now. So once again, we're using the transfer module. Um, to, to actually stream my public key from my laptop to the SSH server and put it in authorized keys because, so I can, I can, with this client, SSH to the phone. All right, forgot the port there. There we go. So this file doesn't exist just to show you that I actually SSH it in from the, <laughs> from the laptop. Running the server. Yeah, so someone was there. You started the server, someone logged in. It was me, okay. <laughs> so, was that clear? Not really. Mm -hmm. Particular. So on the computer now, you actually starting the server or or the client there? So so this is on this is on the on the Android phone. Okay, so you're actually remote controlling your Android phone. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, th this this cost I recorded on this okay, yeah. with this. Mm -hmm. okay. The tap not from another. Sorry. Host. You're not at another host controlling your phone. Uh, you're no. At your phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on the phone. On the phone. Because I had to install SSH uh, oh, daemon. Okay. The jump from the phone to the computer. Sorry? The jump from the phone to the computer. The second yeah. hello file lies on the computer. So you start the SSH server there to jump to the computer, which is normally it goes, it goes the other way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, in this case, I think I was confusing you with my long, long rant about tunnels. <laughs> in this case, the phone is, is uh, just SSH <coughs> server. Uh, actually answering on a local IP, mm -hmm. and the, the laptop is, is just a SSH client. The only thing is, is this one, where I'm connecting to the laptop with a transfer module, and from the laptop I'm also, this is connecting, and on the laptop I'm listening. And on the laptop this is switched, so it's going to read my public SSH key. And then, um, here, we're just running the server. Um, and while, I mean, this, uh, this um, ASCII NEMA doesn't show you that. This took take 10 seconds before I logged in. Uh, so that's a bit confusing, of course. So I logged in from the laptop to the phone. I uh, created the file hello, which you can see there. The file exists now there, but it didn't exist up here. 
just to kind of prove to you that I got in. You're nodding <laughs> in confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I need a keyboard to try it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and these, I mean, I did this last night, so they're, they're not very pedagogic, I guess. They're not perfect in, in that sense at all. Seems about right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the last cast I will show you. Uh, now we're gonna, we're gonna, once again, I'm gonna download all the photos from my camera on the phone but I'm not gonna kind of hack it using Netcat or SoCap. I'm gonna use proper SSH. Um, and when you have SSH, as I mentioned a long time ago, uh, you don't need space on the device you're controlling. So that, that's why, that is the big thing with this last cast. All the modules that you run locally, you can wrap in SSH or something to run it somewhere else. That was not easy to do in Bash. <laughs> <laughs> really not. You chose the language. <laughs> the language chose me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Let's see here. So, and on the laptop, as you can see on my uh, prompt there, the module SSH, this is a target. I want to log in as root, but uh, that's actually just a way of me saying I'm not going to state a user because it doesn't matter. It's going to decide what user we're getting because it's running as a user, the SSH daemon. So uh, that, that's why I'm typing root there, because I don't care what user I get. Uh, this is an environment var variable. It could have been stated in the YAML or somewhere else. So I'm just putting it here. Could I suggest auto instead of root? Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. I think it would be less confusing. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. But it just does SSH with a certain user. Uh, yeah. Did or can you SSH without the user? You will always have No, no, user. okay. If, if I were to type uh, user here, <coughs> then I would have to add another environment variable called SSH user. Oh. And since I kind of know this module, I just didn't care about that. So I just said root because it doesn't matter the SSH server is just going to give me the user it is. Yeah, so you can see I'm in. Oh, bash 4.4, that's nice. Space works from bash uh, 3.2, if you wonder. Yeah, you see, there's, here I'm <laughs> referring to this issue here. <clears throat> Okay, so back at the laptop, running the Android module, listing the photos. Of course, there are no photos on the lap. I, I, now I just ran that locally, so I have to wrap it. Going back in history, fetching the SSH command pasting it there, so I'm going to create a pipe here, or a uh, wrapping. Oh, man. Okay, so what just happened here? I'm running the Android module. The target, I want to list all the camera files. That's bad. Oh, man. There we go. And I'm also running the SSH module. So you can add many modules. Uh, just as we, as we did up there, but as you can see here, root, I added slash wrap. So the SSH module is going to snatch the command 
and wrap it in an SSH call, connect to the server the phone, and run the Android module there. And this is without uploading anything. We're not uploading any script or file or anything like that. Like that. Um, so you're running the command one by one over SSH? Uh, yeah. Basically. Basically. Because otherwise you have to upload some script and run that. Yeah. SSH allows you to. Uh, uh, you know, you can SSH and you can add a command to be run, right? That command can be pretty long. <laughs> um, How long? No. Long. There actually is. I tried it. I tried this on another SSH server, and I got some issues actually with it not being able to to run those long commands. But the normal SSH server has no problem with this. But it runs the commands that would otherwise be run, which is part of the Android mo module. It takes the commands. Camera ls. Yeah. From the Android module. Yeah. So that is a good thing if you wrote this in Bash. Yeah, it would Otherwise, how would you do this? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> true. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. So commands can be wrapped in other commands. This can happen many, many times. So there, I have. Yeah, we're running Docker on our sites. So then I have a command that I wrap in a Docker exec to run this inside a Docker container, which I wrap in an SSH call, because I have to run it on the Docker host to run it in the Docker container. So it's a wrap and wrap. I don't even eat wraps, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So there were again yeah, all the files from the phone listed. Uh, so now we want to download them. So I'm just going to change that target listing f listing the photos to compressing them. Of course, piping this out to uh, redirecting it to a file. So there we go. On your local machine, on the client. Everything is from from the laptop here. Yeah, so just quit that because there's a lot of files. Right. That was the last cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's a small, you know. Yeah, it's. You there's just something behind here. You can <laughs> just get under the skin and do yeah, stuff. Exactly. Doing. You get down to the computer again. Yeah. And it's running uh, uh, Linux kernel, and they they're not really they they does they don't really <laughs> state what distribution it is, but it's Linux. If I remember correctly, Android. They more or less use the Linux kernel, mm. but they have twisted around the model they're using. So a user, for instance, you have one user for each application. Then. Right. So right. it's it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. I guess I have to do something to to isolate. Yeah. And as you saw, did you did you notice the user that we got? It uh, was like u underscore two zero seven something like that. Some kind of. Yeah, that's been true for the for the console application. What's For this um, Termux. Termux, yeah, that's the Termux user. Absolutely, and I mean, if you root the phone, you know, you're gonna have a, a field day. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> you can do a lot more stuff, of course. But I think downloading photos—that's a really, you know, application that I need myself. I don't want to bother with uploading them to some cloud storage. It's not really my cup of tea. It's like getting back to the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. In a, in a good way. In a good way. You actually get back to control. Yeah. So. And all the, there are all these things are just laying under the surface, waiting to, you know, to do work for you. 
and they're amazing. The Unix-like environment is amazing. So we then, what do we do with the iOS platform? I haven't really oh, yeah. played with that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a nice bash there as well. If you like. There is, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah there should be. So they're running also a, a BSD uh, a variant yeah, on the iPhone. Awesome. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. I mean, they, they say that it's much more closed than Android, but maybe we can get in there. In, indeed, it is, but that's more like it's uh, encrypted and certificates all over the okay. operating mm -hmm. system. Okay. It's a layer on top of it on Darwin. So mm. Yeah, I mean, this is actually, this is available now. So we're happy to, uh, you know, I mean, you're very welcome to, I would be happy if you write some modules. <laughs> and they need to be written in, in Bash? Uh, not in Bash, but in Shell Scripts. Yeah. What else, I, I suspect this is not primarily for dealing with phones. No, no, for no, basically no. Anything. this is just for fun. So what, can, what modules do you have so far? Except the Android. Uh, we we have used it for some time now internally to handle uh, servers. So it's very much, and that's a very important use case. Uh, provisioning infrastructure, services, just helping you, you know, monitor and uh, handle the day to day, and also the things we like the next product within SpaceGal. Um, it's going to be quite interesting in that aspect too, with a uh, critical. So, something called Gal. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but really, um, so my um, did I tell you that I met my co-founder in the forest? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so when I, was, when I was living in the forest, I met my co-founder to for, to Blocky. Not in the forest, but. Uh, via Twitter. So, uh, yeah, we really hit it off. He's a really a professional coder. So, since that day, 2013, he's the person I've talked the, the most to, uh, over chat and email, of course. He lives in Brazil. Um, but, we, we, yeah, we work really good together. And he's making a module, probably as we speak. When you see this on YouTube, it's going to be out. <laughs> It's for creating and managing your uh, GPG uh, keys. Because that is hard. And one who is a master on this, <laughs> and one who uh, uses GPG and, and keys, kind of. Uh, yeah, keys. Yeah. It's important if you want to encrypt stuff or just know that this person sent this or downloading something and checking the signature. This is, it's important. But GPG is it's hard. It really is. <laughs> and you don't want to make any mistakes. So he's making a module um, that will just guide you through to just get a hold of, of GPG. Creating keys, listing keys, deleting keys, adding other people to your ring of uh, trust or web of trust. All these things that are just hard and you never get to actually master because it takes time. You can do that with space and the GPG module. That's one example that it has nothing to do with uh, servers or phones or anything remote. That's just something very nice to have. So really, it's uh, you know, whatever you can and want to do from a shell prompt, you can use space to guide you and, and help you. And also, if you, if you are, have a lot of shell scripts, like your babies that you use for different things, you know, you can make modules from them. It will help you uh, uh, add the documentation and, and uh, you know, maybe you want to share it and someone else can also use it.
Yeah, the website is up, the one I showed you, space.sh. That's a one, wonderful uh, top-level domain name, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there's a newsletter. Uh, sign up if you want to. Yeah, and the usual Twitter stuff, of course. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.